there are plenty of pros to continue to archive um, films that were made on film to, to keep them on film. Um, and the main reason is that film uh, already has a proven track record, number one. Uh, there are films that are over 100 years old now. And we have studied uh, how we can maintain a film's lifespan to the greatest extent that we can. And it looks like if it's properly stored, it can last over 100 years and, and up to 400 years, depending on the stock and how many times it goes in and out of the vault. Um, and the other really great thing about film is that the technology, for the most part, basically hasn't changed over the history of the art form. Uh, so I can, well, the projectionist probably wouldn't like it if I took nitrate up to his shiny new booth, but theoretically, I could take a film that was made in 1910 and a film made in 2010, and I could run them both on this projector because it's the same mechanical system that's been used since the advent of film. Um, and that is reassuring because that means that you'll always be able to read back your film um, I mean, and even if you don't have machines anymore, it's analog. So you hold it up to a light and you can, you can see what's on it. Archiving digitally doesn't have that lifespan. Uh, the media that you would archive uh, digital files on is, does not have the same shelf life as film, number one, uh, whether you're talking about a hard drive, an optical disc, or a magnetic tape. Number two, the technology for reading back digital files is constantly changing. There is no digital system that can match film projection and printing. Uh, software changes literally within six to 12 months. So I'm not talking about, um, well, uh, okay, if anyone here who was word processing back in 1988 would like to boot up their document for me, you try sticking those floppy disks into a computer, uh, you're not going to get very far. I mean, the equipment actually changes, but, um, but so does the software. Uh, there's this great um, cautionary tale that came out of Pixar Studios when they were remastering the first Toy Story film for DVD in 2000. The original had come out in 1995 and they didn't want to use film, they wanted to get you know, remaster it from the digital files so they started to uh, re-render, to remaster them and realized that the software they had used to animate uh, the characters in the backgrounds back in 1995 was made with version 2.0 software. They were up to version 14.6 and so the program had changed so considerably it didn't even recognize those files as being made by, by that program. Um, that's a real danger too that your, your technology is going to continue to evolve and the only way to address that is to keep migrating it into the next version, which takes time and costs money um, and is complicated too. I mean, uh, anyone who's transferred a lot of data knows that uh, it's, there, there are bumps on the road between point A and point B. It's not just saying copy and you can count on every zero and one getting across to the other side. Um, you have to do a lot of checking to make sure that your data is uh, hasn't been corrupted in any way, that the file structures are all intact and that uh, they'll be able to be Reread, um, so so film is still the way to go, and it's still a lot less expensive. Um, but now, uh, since you know roughly the mid '90s, uh, digital has been such a key part of the post-production process for films that um, you know saving the original camera negative of a film that has um, been scanned and it's called a digital intermediate process. It's scanned into the digital realm and all of the visual effects and all the final color grading. Uh, everything is done digitally and then new negatives are output to make prints. So for something like um, the, uh, the Lord of the Rings, the Fellowship of the Ring, that original negative doesn't have 80% of the final artistic decisions that were made that are represented in the final look of the film photographed into its negative. Um, and then you can also think about films that are captured digitally, um, like the director David Fincher has made his last three films, Zodiac, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, and um, now Social Network, using uh, digital cameras that record onto hard drives. Uh, so there is no film uh, until the very end of the process when they record out the negative and make a release print that's screened in the theater. Uh, so in those cases, you have no choice. I mean, it was born digital, so it should be archived digitally but how to do that uh, reliably and inexpensively is something that Hollywood is still trying to figure out. <sighs> well, now that I've depressed myself, any other questions? <laughs> yes.